Welcome back to my channel, glad you could join me. At the start of the school holidays, we set off for a one week family holiday from Brisbane to Cairns in far north Queensland. And while we were in Cairns for three days, we took a half day boat trip from Cairns to Green Island to chill out on the island and of me having the opportunity of photographing some of the birds that live on this island. We left Brisbane and Cairns is a two and a quarter hour, nearly two hour and 20 minute trip from Brisbane north. And it's around 1600 kilometers from Brisbane in the northern tropics of Queensland. You can see here on this map here, down in the middle here is Cairns and the boat trip from Cairns to Green Island takes us about 45 minutes. So this is a view of the island. I've got two red lines here. The red line that's in the trees is where I photograph some buff banded rails and a bar shouldered dove. And the red line that runs along the beach, I photograph some Pacific reef herons the light form and the dark form. This is what Green Island looks like when you're coming in on the ferry. I left my 200 to 500 millimeter Nikon lens at home. One, because of the weight and also because I knew that the opportunities of photographing bird life while I was in far north Queensland was going to be very limited. And also the priority of this trip was a family holiday just to chill out with my family. We really need this time away as a family. So my photography, took a back step on this trip, but I still took a couple of lenses. And the lens that I took for wildlife was the Nikon 70 to 300 millimeter AFP lens. Now this lens will not fit all of the Nikon digital SLR cameras. And if you're not sure whether the AFP lenses will be able to be used on your camera, just do a Google search and you'll find very easily which cameras that you can use them on. And it gives me the sharp pictures. And I did a review on this lens a while ago and I'll put the link up here now that you can see it. It's definitely a great lens to have. The only downside is that the minimum aperture at 300 mil is f6.3. So you don't really get that really nice separation between your subject and your background. When I photograph wildlife is that I shoot in manual mode. I shoot in auto ISO, auto white balance. Now when I'm using the Nikon 70 to 300 mil, the minimum aperture at 300 mil is f6.3. And that is what I will normally use. So I set my aperture to f6.3 and the shutter speed I set depending on what I'm going to photograph. If the bird is just walking along the forest floor, I might bring the shutter speed down to 1 400th of a second. But if they're birds that are like on the beach, likely to catch a fish or to take off, I will use a very fast shutter speed. Around a minimum of 1 1200th of a second and at times I will even increase it to 1 2500th of a second for birds in flight because I want very crisp images. I don't want to see the wings having any blur in them. What I do is if I'm photographing a bird, I normally stick to that same shutter speed. I won't adjust the shutter speed, especially in daylight. So if it's an egret or a heron on the beach, I won't move the shutter speed even if the bird is just walking along. I'll just leave it there because I don't know at any time it could just take off on me. And if I'm down to 1 500th of a second, I'll get caught out and end up with a blurred image. Let's take a look at the images now that I took on this day. Now these photos of the greater crested terns were taken at 1 2500 of a second and at f8 and they're beautiful, nice and sharp. Now I only took a couple of them, about three of them. Now in total I took about eight or nine photos but these were the three best photos so these are the ones that I kept from this day. As I left at Jetty I started walking inside it's in subtropical Queensland, North Queensland, and even though it's an island, it's like a little mini rainforest. And these buff banded rails were everywhere around. And unlike around Brisbane here, I found these were not skittish at all. Here, very hard to get close to these buff banded rails. But over there, I got within about four or five meters from them, so I could get some very sharp image. I like zooming in so I could try to get the best image possible, so I don't have to crop too much. And this is what I've done on this image here. After a while, I was just watching it moving around. And this is something you have to pay attention to when you're photographing wildlife. It's great taking images like this one here, but just keep an eye out for when the bird changes behavior because it will change behavior. It won't just always be doing one thing. And after watching it for a few minutes, it stopped and it just stuck its head up. I actually knew that it was going to start preening itself. It's just raising itself up like that. So I took a shot like this. And then the next one, 
of course, it's preening himself. They're beautiful photos and it had moved from the shade into the sun, so I've got some beautiful colorings on it. After this, I was just walking a little bit further along and I noticed a bar shoulder duff just take off in front of me, just off the side of the path. And when I looked where it had taken off, and there was its mate just flying in the leaf litter and all that, just hiding itself. And this is something that you have to be mindful as well when you're photographing, especially if you're a person like me. I'm six foot three, 186 centimeters tall. So I'm an imposing figure. So I could be seen as a threat to these birds. I crouch down on my knees to get much lower, not only so that I'm not a threat to the bird, but also so I could get a better angle when I'm photographing the birds. After about two minutes of being crouched down, it went back to what it was doing, which was sunning itself. It's just opened its wing up, the sun's coming behind it. It is a beautiful image, something that I would have missed if I had not crouched down, or if I hadn't paid attention to my surroundings and seen that it was just trying to make itself hidden in the leaf litter on the forest floor. Now, after this, I moved off to the beach because I was very limited in time on this day. There was a big stuff up with the boat times. We thought we had to be back at a certain time and it turned out that I would have been able to photograph birds for much longer, but I only had about half an hour. I really didn't want to waste too much of my time. So I headed out to the beach because I had seen when I'd gotten off the boat that there was quite a lot of birds along the beach. And these were the birds that I was seeing. They were Pacific Reef herons. And like I said, there's the light morph and the dark morph. This was the light morph and it was just flying along the beach. After it flew down, I just walked a few steps and I noticed in the tree, there was one of the other reef herons up in the tree here. This is the dark morph. Now, something that I did find peculiar was that the light morph seemed to be a bigger bird, a stocky bird, in my eyes anyway, compared to the light morph. Now, I don't know if that's because the dark morph birds were younger birds and the light morph were a much older bird, so maybe that had something to do with it, but that was just my visual views that it looked like that the two birds were slightly different sizes. And this is how I like photographing birds. I like getting in close and you can really see all the details in the feathers and the eyes. It's just walking along the rocks here and it's just staring intently because it's out hunting for food. This was another bird walking the other way and the same, you can see the color is slightly different. This looks like a younger bird, even at f6.3. Look, I've got some beautiful blurred background there. So don't think that at 6.3, you still can't get some nice blurred background. It just depends how far your background is away from you compared to the bird. With all this happening, I was looking at these two birds. All of a sudden, the bird that was in the tree flew down and caught this fish here. So I missed the initial impact, but look at it. It's so nice. Wing spread and it's got a really nice fish to it. Now, I like photographing like this, zooming in, but sometimes it's good also to think about showing your viewer what the scene looks like. So trying to have the bird plus also a bit of its surroundings so that you can say, well, it was on the beach, it was a rocky beach, and there was just fish moving around everywhere. Look at this photo here. Doesn't this show a different aspect? This is the same bird. It's still got the fish. I quickly zoomed out and look, you can see in the background there, all the fish, they're just jumping out of the water. Why? Because there's some bigger fish hunting them. And this is why these reef herons are along the beach, because the smaller fish are being brought right to them by bigger fish chasing them. So they try to get into the shallows to get away from the bigger fish, creating a perfect opportunity for these birds to snap up a very good breakfast. Now, with all this commotion, all of a sudden I look and there's a white reef heron grabbed a fish from the, the shoreline and it's very nice as well. But now, look, I've done the same thing. I've zoomed out a little bit to show what's going on in its environment. And look at it, same thing. The fish are just jumping around the background. Having a few of these photos in your storyboard, like when you're showing on social media and that, it gives a viewer a better perspective of what you're viewing that day, not just always cropped in. Nice to see some cropped in photos, but zooming out and being able to show the surroundings of how the bird is hunting really helps people interact with your images. Now this is a sequence where it's actually catching a fish. You can see it, it's looking for it, it's striking the fish, grabs a fish, 
and now it's starting to turn around and heading out of the water so it can have its lunch. It's just moving around and it's starting to look at me. And this last image here that I'm going to show you, for me, this is a classic image. I really like this because it's like a kid show, catching a fish saying, hey, look at the fish that I've just caught. And this is why I've cropped it in portrait orientation. So I cropped it in portrait, got rid of all the distraction on the side of the bird, and it really highlights the bird. And it looks like the bird is just showing off its fish to me. So you can see, even though I didn't have much time, I only had about 30 minutes, I still walked away with some great photos. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, stay safe, enjoy wildlife photography, and know that sometimes we are time limited, but we can still get some great photos.